for just a quick moment. And we had church that Sunday night. And that's the night that I met my dear special friend, Sister Leah Boudreaux, who has spoken to my life for a solid year. But that's also the night that my dad went to the hospital. And shortly thereafter, he was admitted and passed away. That day is quickly approaching, Sister Christie, and I feel it. Every day, every minute, every moment, it has been extremely hard the last month. But there is a peace about it. When I call on the name of Jesus, when I call Jesus, Sister Robin, my sorrow turns to joy because I know that he can breathe and I know that he's on strips of gold. And I know that if I keep on living this way, that one day I'm going to see him and my mama again. Hallelujah. We had a great time at camp meeting. Great time. My God, I would give, I thought about it. My oldest son loves music, loves it. Music can have a hold on you. It can either have a good hold, it can have right. a bad hold. Right. And I remember when he first started going to denim, shortly after he moved in with us, and he'd come home one night and his guitar fell, and he said a word, I don't even remember what the word was, it wasn't too terribly bad, but it wasn't probably the best. And I went to say something, and the Holy Ghost quickened me. And the Lord spoke to me and said, keep your mouth shut. I don't know how God talks to y'all, but I'm blunt, so he's blunt with me. Keep your mouth shut. I'll take care of it. Well, that's been really hard. I have not kept my mouth shut when I should have at times. But I would have given my last dime. I would have borrowed money to make sure my babies come to go to camp meeting this week. Because when we pulled up and said, Yesterday afternoon, to put, or yesterday morning, to get gas, all four of us, he rolled down his window and said, What'd you say, Mom? I got my headphones in. He said, I'm listening to Taylor Fish. Jesus. I said, Thank you, Jesus, because I know you're doing the work. Yes. Even though I'm stubborn and want to be the mom and be in control. But God blessed us tremendously. If you were able to watch, then you know what a blessing it was. But to be in that building, to be in that tabernacle and fill the glory, that's Shekinah glory. But I didn't tell them through faith. Next year, it will be the whole faith. It will be the whole family. Because daddy's going to come next year. And then I'm going to teach that Bible study to y'all. And y'all will be equipped to go out into the world and teach a Bible study. Because I'm going to tell you what. We're not doing what God called us to do here. We got our, some of us got our prayer lives right. But we haven't got the commission right. We haven't got to be out those doors and persuaded people that what we've got is what's going to get them out of here. Hallelujah. Trey said, Mom, I just want to be able to give Daddy the Bible study. I said, baby, daddy already knows what it takes. Hallelujah. We're so thankful to have our visitors this morning. We're going to sing a couple more songs and then we'll turn it over to the grandmas. If you've never heard her sing, well, you just sit back. I promise you, you went for a treat. And my God, whoo! If you've never heard this little man over here preach, he's a giant. Yes. 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 They're my friends. They're so dear to me. I think we spoke maybe two minutes at camp meeting, didn't we? She found somebody else to go and talk to the night we finally got to go out to eat. But you know what? I sat there and thought, that's okay. That's okay. Because I know what I need from her, I get. 
most of all, I know what they sow into my child. I know what they sow into my children. And I'm telling you now, there is nothing. I, I don't know what your plans are for the future, but if you can give up anything to make sure your family was in camp meeting at least one night next year, that's what you need to do. Our priorities are all messed up. We'll give up anything and everything to make sure our children do whatever they want to do. But on the way coming home yesterday, all that struggle, all that fight, all the years I've come by myself, all the years I prayed, said, God, when is it my turn? You know what I'm talking about, my Lou. Your time's coming. Your time's coming. My little grandson sat in the car on the way home. And instead of saying, your church, Minnie, he said, our church. They're watching. They watch every step you make. I watch Avery. He wants to be just like Weston. He wants to walk like Weston. I watched him one night here recently. I literally want to take every step the same way his daddy did. And I, I called Weston's attention. I said, do you see that? He wants to be you. Make sure you are the man that God wants you to be. To teach him to be that kind of man. This morning as we sing, God is worthy of all of our praise. As I look out across this congregation, I don't care what your illness is. I don't care what excuse you had. God woke you up this morning. You were able to stand on your own two feet. able to come to the house of the Lord. There are people who cannot do that physically. So you, my friend, whoever you are, you deserve, God deserves you to stand on your feet, even if it's just for a minute, and give him the praise. Hallelujah. Worship with us. Worship with us.
She got to be in kid zone this week. But the most amazing thing was this young lady sitting in front of us. When Stuart knew the, the young girl, she, he took a picture, sent it to her dad. Her dad said, hey, that lady sitting beside her needs the Holy Ghost. Before church service was over. Now, Christy didn't talk to me in camp. She acted like a snob. That's okay. <laughs> she really didn't, y'all. I'm just picking. We didn't see each other but one time. I'm just picking. She sat in front of the lady, her brother Aaron, me and Brother Stewart, they're sitting right behind the lady. Olivia's sitting on the pew down below me. And of course, I had all three of my grandboys with me, and they all, except Avery, he decided to be part of Denham's church that night and not part of Minnie's. But we're sitting there, and I got the two boys, and they're hanging on me, and whatever. And the Lord spoke in, in, in a powerful way through that man of God. And Olivia prayed that lady and her 10, 12, 12 year old son through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah.
the greatest miracle of all is salvation. Amen. I'm thankful for salvation this morning. I'm thankful that I'm not on the road to hell this morning. church and we, and I'm not preaching, I still have another mind I'm going to preach, but I'm going to say this. Oftentimes we come to church and we talk about how his presence was there. But in that same time we often leave, we was aware of his presence, but we was totally unaware of his power. We're being stirred. But Brother Nettleville used to say it's not about being stirred. It's about being changed. So you recognize his presence this morning. And I pray that every one of us, before we leave here, we are operating under the power of God. Because his power is what's going to change us. through those doors. And when we walk through those doors, we left those problems out there. We left those situations out there because we know or we knew that we we get into the presence and the power of God that he can turn things around. And let me tell you this morning, you may be going through a little hell in your life, but if you would get up and begin to pray to God,
Yeah. 
and, 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 and limbs being straightened out. But we, we omit the miracle of salvation. We omit the miracles of prodigals coming home. If you will call unto me, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things. Jeremiah 33 and 3. But he didn't stop there. I will show you great and mighty things. And then he concluded with that you know not of. And those that know me, Know that that is the best is yet to come first. It ain't over yet, church. And I think we understand that when we get on this this roll that we like to call it. It was about a year or so ago, I believe it is. I tried to change the mantra that. We're not looking for revival. That's right. We're not trying to get in revival. But we are revival in progress. Yeah. Revival, we think, invite a lot of people to come to a series of services. And we get them in and we, we pray them. We help them get the Holy Ghost. We baptize them in Jesus' name. That's not revival. That is the byproduct of a church that has made their mind up that no matter what comes our way we're going to walk in revival we're going to walk renewed we're going to walk revived we're going to walk refreshed and when the enemy comes in we're going to stand up we're going to square our shoulders up we're going to look him in the eye and say no, 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 devil it ain't over with yet the past is yet to come Can I get away with that like Larry Mark Ross does? I said it. The Lord has done some great things in here this morning. And you know what? I think we're going to hear things come this coming week of what happened here in the service so far. We have brothers and sisters glad to hear it. It's only a little bit after 11. I don't know if he's going to preach his full sermon or what he's going to do. Yes, preach, brother. But preach. it was about this time a year ago that uh, Sister Glenda came up to me at Denham Church. She told me that Aaron was evangelizing. And I think it was the next day I reached out to him. And it was the uh, time that Brother Nettleville was in the hospital. I told you that right up Sister Jennifer mentioned that. And I'm so thankful that we we reconnected. Yes, amen. Yeah. We went to church together for a little while. It was the Pentecost in the 90s. And, uh, yeah. yeah. 30 something years ago. I'm a little bit older than him, but <laughs> but back in the 90s I could hang with him on the basketball court and so could my brother 2023 I don't know if any of us can hang on the basketball court <laughs> you can look at me and my brother and I was to tell we can't hang on the basketball court but I'm so glad that we reconnected and by the way Brother Glenn, I don't love you because of the vehicle you have. That's right. Like some of these ladies say. <laughs> There's a story behind I know. I'll let everybody have some imagination on that one. Amen. But I love him. I love his wife. Yes. Yes. Your children. 
some of the two precious children, most precious children you'll ever meet. Now, I don't know how they are when they get home. I'll let Chris and you tell you about that. Probably like everybody else's kids when they get home. Amen. But I, I just want them to come to the pulpit now. And whatever they feel, the Lord, Brother Glenn, if you feel like to preach that, just go ahead. Uh, we, we used to not get out of here about 12, 30 anyway. That's right. And uh, but would y'all come? Just have your liberty in the Lord this morning. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm bringing this up here, but I'm not sure I'm going to use it. So, what a wonderful presence in the Lord. Yes, amen. So many things have already been said by Pastor that I was going to say. And in the service Thursday night that we were in, I leaned over to him and I said, this man's preaching 50% of my sermon already. I said, we should have just invited Taylor Fish for Sunday morning. <laughs> and the same thing happened again Friday night. And I'm going to tell you, what's happening is God is stirring his church. Yeah. And you know what he's stirring his church for? And you know what he's stirring his church to? Is not more productions right. and not more lights right. and not more smoke machines. Yeah. He is stirring his church straight to the book of Acts. Right. Because we are a continuing, we are the church found in the book of Acts today in 2023. We continue what they started in the book of Acts. And if I was going to preach, We were going to preach about the revival that is here. And I, look, I only have really one thing to say. I'm going to get my wife. She's going to come up and say, we're going to worship a little bit more. You ain't seen nothing yet, Watson. I'm telling you right now, look at your neighbor and tell them you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen, I know that's not proper English, but no obligation base right there. Look what the Lord has done. Just in, just in about a year, I know we lost a mountain of a man and a bishop over this church. And I'm sorry for that loss. But it ain't all bad. It ain't all bad, no. When you look at what the Lord has done over the last maybe a year or so in this church. There are people sitting on the pews of this church that were not here 12 months ago. And we're going to continue to prophesy that God is bringing the prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters home in those years. We're going to continue to prophesy that to the folks. And I look at this wonderful family that the Lord sent to this church in the Phillips. And now, Brother Stewart's got a tremendous assistant pastor to help him. You know why? Because you ain't seen nothing yet. And when the Lord fills up this building, I'm sorry, Pastor. You're going to have a holy headache on your hands. But he's going to make a way, and he's going to make provision. is here. Yes, and I'm going to echo what Pastor said. Revival, the, what, we, what we've what we kind of been branded to, be, to, to believe what is revival through the years of the church and church growth, a lot of things just get pushed under that category. But do you know revival is when God revives His church. That is revival. Revival is when you and I Get red hot fire. Oh, the fire of God's just falling on our life. It's leading us. We're being led by the Spirit. We have miracles, signs, wonders, outpourings of the hope. That's, the revival is when it comes to us 
and get some old nasty trash out of us. And when that happens, guess what? The lost souls walk through those two doors and the power of the Holy Ghost falls where we were sent. But the revival is what begins in us. And you can only revive something that's died. So if there's something inside of you today, you got to love on if you've lost something in your prayer life, if you look up and say, I don't pray like I used to, or maybe I don't worship like I used to, I used to do the twirly bird in the fronts, and now I don't do it no more, let God revive your spirit. And when that happens, the building will fill up. It's just a byproduct. Amen. Sister Brooke, I had today... The Lord just spoke to me while I was sitting on this front, front row today. And I don't mean to embarrass you. And the two words that came to me were be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. Amen. Power of the Holy Ghost is in this place. I'm telling you, if you need a deliverance and you haven't gotten it yet, we're not going to leave until you get it. God's not on our time clock. I'm sorry. As the, as the drawing of the Lord comes nearer and nearer, Pastor, it ain't going to be where we had a service and we got these many songs and this. He, look, it's, it's okay for us to have structure and for us to have order, but sometimes you can structure and order the move of God right out of your service if you're not. But that's not what Rick Watson's going to do. We're going to allow the power of the Holy Ghost to continue to fall and interrupt any service he wants to interrupt. And at that time, there is a delivering power in this place this morning. God can deliver anybody from anything at any time. And I don't want you to be surprised. Don't you act shocked when they walk through the... Because there's going to be some people that are going to walk through these doors. That you are thinking to yourself, my God, I never thought they'd dock in the door of the, of the church. But you know why they're coming? They need healing. And this is a house of healing. And this is a house of miracles. Every one of you sitting on these seats today, every one of you sitting on these seats today, I want to encourage you. My wife's going to come up and we're going to sing and worship a little more before we dismiss. I want to encourage everyone here. That you are very important and vital to what God has prepared for this church. Right. Your pastor and your assistant pastor, all of the other leadership, they need every single one of you. That's true. And they need you to be ready. Amen. You can't raise babies by yourself. You sometimes you need sometimes Trace, you just gotta go, Mom, I need a hand. That's right. Right, we need a little peace and quiet. Can you and the church is the same way. Pastor and, and, and Brother Phillips will not be able to do it all by themselves. Every single one of you are so important and vital to what That's God right. is doing and continuing to do in this yes, church. Yes. And they need every single one of you yes. on board, yes. on fire for God, prayed up, fasted up. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. I just want to say that the camp meeting was tremendous. Yes. Friday night I had to stop myself from worshiping so much. Because I was losing my voice. And I thought, there's no way. We better have tongues and interpretation or something on Sunday morning if I keep it up. Because my voice is going out. But I'd rather lose my voice in worshiping God. Yes. Yes. Than yelling at the football game or throwing something at the TV because they didn't score at that point. I'd rather lose my voice in worship. We had a wonderful time. God spoke to his people. I'm encouraged. Pastor, I know you're encouraged. The church is on fire. Yes. The church is going forward. We are marked. Look, people, listen to me. People are not our problem. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But the spirits of this present world are what we are warring against. We are at war, church. This is spiritual warfare. And you can't show up to the battle without the armor on. And you're not going to go back. You've got to put on the whole armor of God because this is a battle that we are fighting. We are fighting against the spirit of Antichrist that does work in the world today. And you know, sometimes you face things 
And the only thing that you can do, Aunt Lou, is go down to your knees and war in prayer. Sometimes that's the only thing you can do. And you fast and you push that plate away and you let the... Hey, the common theme and the common thread through the book of Acts was they prayed and they fasted and they ministered the word of the Lord everywhere they went. And at one point in the book of Acts, it says these are they that turn the world upside down. They didn't do it by patty cake and playing play church. They were on, on fire for God. And you know, there's been a saying before that the early church in Acts did so much with so little. But the modern day church does so little with so much. That's not going to be my verdict. And that's not going to be the verdict of this church in Acts. I believe I'm standing and looking at people today that want to do something for God and want to be on fire for God and want to reach this community that He's put you in. And you're going to do it in Jesus' name. I'm asking my wife to bless us today as she sings. Y'all love Sister Christy? Yes. Me too. I've told my husband this often, and maybe Brother Stewart and um, Sister Jennifer on occasion, I'm not sure, but if I have, I'm going to reiterate, there's always such a spirit of liberty here. And where there is liberty, there is freedom, and the spirit of the Lord rests and abides. And in that atmosphere, anything can happen. Um, I have to say this really quickly. Uh, so... <laughs> The night that, that, that we were up, actually ended up at the same restaurant with Minnie, and I thought, I'm going to finally get to visit with her. Laura said, no, you're not. I'm like, what you talking about? <laughs> I want to go sit with Minnie. I want to go visit. I want to go be with my people. They're like a second family to us. This church is, and all of you guys mean so, so much to us and have become so close and so dear to mine and my husband's lots and my children. And um, We can't say enough about that, but you're not just... Uh, fellow parishioners in the apostolic movement, but you are extended family of the Goodlandans, and we all know that. Um, but the Lord said, no, you're going to go sit over there with her, because she needs to talk to you. And I thought, I don't, I don't think I'm doing that right. And I was hungry, and it was like, and we were at Buffalo Wild Wings, and I was going to eat. But let me tell you what happened. So I sat with my dear friend, and she began to cry and explain some things to me that she was dealing with. And the Lord, how he always does, showed me then that I had a live, living, breathing, spiritual object lesson sitting at the other table that I was able to pour out to her. And what she was dealing with, I began to use my friend Minnie, and I said, do you see that woman over there? Let me tell you what God has done in Trace and Madison and Brother Mike. We're all sitting there living, breathing examples of the power of God. Oh, God. And it hit exactly where she was living right now. And she was able to, she just, are you kidding me? And I was able to identify to her living people. You know, sometimes when we try to um, iterate to someone what God has done in our life, it, it goes a little bit, but if they can actually put their eyes on that mirror, that's right. That's right. it's powerful. And then I began to share with her about Weston, and I said, I met their mother, and we reconnected at Silks and Crafts. I went through the whole testimony, and when I tell y'all, she left there encouraged and uplifted, and that's someone that doesn't say a lot, and she doesn't show her emotions a lot, but as I began to explain it, I was like, and Trace, and Madison said, she doesn't even have a big background in Pentecost, and she's laying hands on people in the altar. So I know God's going to do it for your family. Amen. So my option lesson <laughs> was my dear friends from the Watson Church, and y'all didn't even know it. <laughs> so I thank God for that. But had I been sitting at the table with them, I wouldn't have been able That's to really right. do that. That's right. So I got my flesh out the way and had my wings by myself, but it's okay. <laughs> Um, we're just going to sing a couple of worship courses this morning. I want you to join in with me. Okay? God's already moved, but He's not done yet. And we're going to keep worshiping and entertaining His presence. Well, now can't nobody do me like Jesus.
Oh, my God. 